John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now this comes directly from the authorized King James Version of the Holy Bible. In fact, I am using that version right now as a mouse pad. <laughs> That's what I have as my mouse pad right now. Um, John 14, 6. And this verse is used by Christians to say, you know, take the literal man, the historic man, Jesus Christ, that's going to come again, take him as your personal savior. And if you do not, then you're going to go to hell or whatever. You will not be, you will not be welcomed into God's kingdom. What I wanted to show is how, how much is actually missed when, when we take that particular stance on it. Now, what I say that Jesus Christ is, is an archetype. He is the, he is the hero figure, right? He's the archetype. He's the, um, he's the model. He is the exemplar that we are all supposed to live by, right? That we are supposed to be all Christ-like. And so, therefore, when we say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that Jesus resides in you. And so, and therefore, to be Christ-like, to follow the way of the Christ, to take up that cross, is to live like as Jesus lived. And understand that that way, that truth, that light, that is within you. I came to those ideas long before I ever, you know, became a Gnostic Christian and started particularly talking about the, the, you know, the beauty of Jesus, if you will. So let's go back to this. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now look at that gematria total there. And everybody, everybody can do this themselves on martyleads33.com. I've got the gematria calculator there, septenary cipher, of course. Gematria total 322. And people are like, whoa, three, whoa, 322, 322, that's skull and bones. How is it that John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. How is it that that shares a number with skull and bones? What's going on here? I thought 322 was an evil number. And what I keep trying to tell people is that these are not evil numbers. 322, 666, 13, 33, none of these are evil numbers. And what basically what what you have there when you have a, an organization like Skull and Bones flashing the number 322 is this is the occult way through the arithmetical the arithmetical arts the occult way of basically saying nana na boo boo we know and you don't we know about the esoteric and mystical nature of these ancient scriptures of like the Holy Bible, of course, that we're talking about here. And this information is not taught. It's not taught. It was locked away in the mystery schools. And why was it locked away in the mystery schools? We've covered this time and time again as well for revealing and concealing to be custodians, to hide it and to reveal it. There's it, multiple reasons, you know, um, sometimes to preserve it and protect it. And that's just the way it is. And it's, like I said uh, as well, information in our time, that's what's happening. It needs to be preserved to protect because, as you can see, YouTube is shutting down all these people that are speaking truth. Well, what, do you think that's happened in history a few times? I, could, I, I would assume, right? 322. Let's talk about 322. First and foremost, um, 322, 3 plus 2 plus 2 is what, everybody? It's 7. 322, if we just add it using, um, you know, Pythagorean addition, numerological reduction methods, basic numerological principles, 3 plus 2 plus 2 equals 7. We all know, we all know um, 7 in English gematria, the word 7 equals 22. And 22 divided by 7 gives the all-important number, the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter, pi, 3.142. So the word 7 in and of itself encodes the number 22 and 322 that uh, re resolves or re reduces to 7. Okay, well, 7, the word 7 equals 22. Count those the number of words in that verse. It's 22. 22 words in that verse. Pretty damn interesting. Reduces down to 7. So there's multiple ways it's actually encoding pi. <clears throat> You know what I said earlier about how God has chosen every human being to be here. You were a gift of God. You were, you know, it's like, well, who made you? Who made you right now? Well, my mom and dad made me. Okay, but who made them? Well, their mom and dad. But then who made them? Well, their mom and dad. Well, at some point, if you follow the religious line back, the relinking line back, you're going to get to what? God. That God put every single human being on this earth and gave every single human being the same exact template. 
um, here is the numbers. Uh, th this is the uh, Gematria value of the words 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. If you put the Gematria, Gematria cipher, sevenfold septenary cipher, to these uh, 15 words, 0 through 14, you get 322. Now, what is 14? 14 is right on your hands. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So you could actually say the, the, uh, your palm is 0, or you start with 0. 0 is the non-number that is at the foundation of everything. It's the placeholder, if you will, in mathematics. So we could see that the, non the immateriality or non-material nature of the 0 is the placeholder of all creation. You start from that 0 and you go 14. So 322, 0 through 14 is right here. And, and most people that have, have explore this stuff and make video upon video about the number 322 say, ah, oh, it's evil, it's evil, it's evil. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends what you do with your hands. It depends what you do with this, this temple that God gave you, the will that you have that God gave you, what you choose to do with it, the line of good and evil that runs down your heart, which way are you going to take? Are you going to go evil or are you going to go good? You know, The number is just there to point out the design. The design element of creation, the design element of you, the design elements of our language, and the numbering system that we use to decode our language. 322 is actually also found, in, funny enough, in the Bulak Museum in Cairo, in Stila 666. And it says, this scene is depicting an, an initiate going to learn the mysteries from the sun god Horus. So you can see the sun god Horus was right there. He's got his staff. And this person's like going to learn all the mysteries. And, and right behind Horus, right there, you can see there's like those, um, I, I don't know, they're like sheaths or what, whatever you call it, uh, ribbons or bands or whatever. And if you count the sections, there's 14 sections and 23 sections. 14 sections and 23, right behind Horus there, the sun god in the Egypt, Egypt uh, mythology. 14 times 23. 14 times 23 is 322. So 322 is encoded in that stela as well. I mean, that thing is just loaded with symbolism too. I mean, you see the, the I think that's the god Newt that's arched overhead, I want to say. Um, but that is the arch of the stars. And if there's any sort of um, mystical philosophy or spirituality that you're going to derive from that is that man is of the stars, as above and so below. You know? So there's that. So, okay, I wanted to go back to this. Why is Skull and Bones using the skull? So you got the 322 right there, right? Okay, we got that. So why are they using the skull? Well, the skull encodes pi as well. So the skull, and you can see they don't have the mandible, they don't have the jaw in, that, in the Skull and Bones logo, they just have the top half. Why? Because that actually encodes pi. There's, um, there's uh, 22 bones in the skull, so there's 14 facial bones and 8 in the cap, 22 bones make up the skull, and there's 7 orifices, 2 eyes, 2 ears, 2 nostrils, and 1 mouth. So 22 bones make up the skull, Seven orifices. That's pi, folks. 22 bones, seven orifices. Pi. So hence why Skull and Bones is using... So now we have, a, now we have a, a, an explanation for the number 322, and we also have an explanation for why they're showing the, the skull. And everybody that has never studied this sort of stuff immediately is like, oh, they're all about death. And I mean, I'm not saying they're not. But... It's, there's, 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 there's deeper levels of information that they're withholding as opposed to just that, that's, a, that's a symbolic of death and that's all it is, you know, that they're just psychopaths. They are, but psychopaths obtain knowledge too and hide knowledge as well. And that's, that's the key lesson you need to know. You see those bones, the crossbones there that are under the skull that encodes pi? Right there, right? Well, those are femur bones. Well, femur is just an anagram for fumer. And what is fumer? Fumer is fire. Fumer is fire. So your femur bone is fire. Interestingly enough, on the zodiacal makeup of man, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, I, I've showed it uh, many different times, but there's a tons of stuff on the web about this. Ton, it, this is in, in tons of esoteric literature about how the stars, uh, once again, just like the goddess Newt there in the... Um, the Egyptian stela there, you know, man is made of the stars, if you will. And Sagittarius is located as the femur bone. You can even see it, I think you can see it on this one, but there's a bunch of examples on this. And it's not just a European thing. Um, this is from Persia. 
once again, and those are the constellations that are placed on the body of a human being. And this is actually Aztec. This is um, um, Mexico. So, and the zodiac man has Sagittarius as the femur bone. So here we have skull and bones. Boom, we got the femur bone. It's shown there. Femur means fumer. I mean, it's it's an anagram for fumer, right? And it's it's assigned to the uh, zodiacal sign of Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is a fire sign, element of fire. It's also the ninth astrological sign and spans um, the 240 to 270th, 270th degree of the zodiac, which is interesting. I could go into the number 270, not going to do that now, just for brevity's sake. But that's one of the other things that they're encoding is astrology in this simple symbol here. That's astrotheological. It's gematria. It's got the it's got the mysticism of the arithmomancy of the human body. There's tons of stuff there that they're they're holding that they're withholding in this symbol. And you know, Christ is multiple instances where Christ is is shown in the zodiac. The Christ is an example of um, you know once again this cosmic man, if you will, a zodiacal makeup of man. And there's, I mean, I've got tons of uh, images of this. And the whole point is that if you see that Christ is in the center of creation, and that's the whole point, that all of the center of creation, just as, as we know as flat earthers, that the entirety of creation is geocentric. It revolves around the going-ons and drama of the human experience, and that ultimately that human experience is done through the experiencer, right? The person that experiences the thing, your consciousness. And so that's when we when we talk about being Christ-like, it's understanding that thing. that And it's not a self, it's not, a, as, as I've said before, it's not being self-centered, it's centering the self is a better way to put it. Not self-centered, centering the self. It's recognizing and finding your center. The center of the human being is the heart. It's the sacred heart of Jesus. And so all of these things um, are encoding this sort of stuff. And I, I just want to leave you with this because people will, you know, people don't like that saying, talking about apotheosis, man becoming God, man, man becoming Christ-like, man recognizing that he is of the divine. No, Jesus is the divine. There's no other being besides Jesus. Jesus is God, and that's it. You know, I, I have an issue with that because if you actually read some of the other verses in the Bible, it says the exact opposite, right? So this is the first one I wanted to point out. So this this is just a few. This Once there's John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Right? Well, this is just three verses before this. John 14 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. Wherever Jesus is, that's where you are. Oneness, the unity of creation, the unity with, the, with Jesus. Once again, this comes from what is this? Luke seventeen twenty one. I guess is what it is. It says, Neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So all these people, all these people that are saying, Oh, no, God is over here. Jesus is over here. God is over here. You know, Jesus is, is coming back. And when he comes back, then God will be here. No, no, no. Those are the people that are saying, those are the people that you should shy away from that are saying, Lo here, lo there. No kingdom of God is within you. And this is Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. I just want to say this. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Prove it to yourself is what it's saying. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? How that Jesus Christ is in you. Pretty, pretty much says it, you know, plain as day, pretty clear. <laughs> Of course, Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And a reprobate is essentially a sinner. So, all of that stuff, all of that stuff that's in John 14, 6, all of it's locked away within the letter work of that verse. Pretty amazing. Pretty remarkable, if you ask me. <laughs>